Well, hello everyone. I wanted to put together a, a lecture video to cover one aspect of this chapter on uh, biology that I, I definitely uh, believe is a good overview as it moves us into an understanding of the human nervous system. So let's go ahead and get started. I've always thought this was a pretty good chart. You'll see similar charts here. But uh, if you've looked over some of the material that makes up the human nervous system of, of, of the body, this here uh, little flow chart is a really good example of what we call one's nervous system, all right, which is the band of all those fibers and neurons and things like that all brought together to make up you, okay? Now, as you see by looking at this chart, the human nervous system is made up of two major parts. It's actually a neat little question to ask once in a while on a test. How many components, uh, major components make up the human nervous system? And the answer is two, uh, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And that's really all there is to it. Now, there are subcategories under each, but uh, there are only two major parts, and that's worth noting. What I'm going to talk about in this lecture is mostly the peripheral nervous system, and then I'm going to talk about one facet of the central nervous system, and that is the spinal cord. The material on the brain I'm going to save for a, another video. So let's go ahead and get started talking about the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system, sometimes called the PNS, basically is all the nerves and the neurons throughout the entire body other than the brain and spinal cord other than the brain and spinal cord the the brain and spinal cord uh, those nerves and neurons are part of the central nervous system so the peripheral is pretty much everything else that runs throughout the entire body and that's the premise behind that okay uh, if you take a look at this picture here everything that you see in green uh, so to speak uh, other than the spinal cord and the brain is an example of a peripheral nervous system so if you turn around and you get feeling in your fingers as you pick up a pencil or you touch something or you have a rock in your shoe and you can feel that that is nerves and neurons that are sending electrochemical messages probably to your spinal cord and up to the brain but the periphery all those nerves throughout the entire body other than the brain and spinal cord make up the peripheral nervous system Okay. Now, the peripheral nervous system has two subparts, and these are pretty basic in their explanation. The first is what is called the somatic nervous system. And the somatic nervous system, know this soma is body. All right. If you've uh, uh, read into the chapter already, we talk about the soma uh, as part of a neuron. Soma means body. Uh, the somatic nervous system, therefore, is bodily uh, uh, neurons, and the somatic nervous system basically handles what I call voluntary or what is called voluntary muscle movements. The movements you make to write something down or to type it in on a laptop okay, or on your phone. The movements you make to work the door handle to get in and out of a room. Uh, the movements that you make as you walk down the hallway and you work your way around people who are stopped and so on. Those are all responsible and handled, at least in part, by the somatic nervous system. So that's really what, the, uh, what it does. It handles any kind of voluntary muscle movements, things that you have to think about. Now, if the somatic nervous system handles voluntary muscle movements, it's pretty obvious that the autonomic nervous system, or the ANS, handles involuntary muscles and organs. Those things include things like your heart, uh, your lungs, a lot of your internal workings that really don't just work because they've got nothing better to do. They work because the autonomic nervous system tells them to work. And if they did not tell them to work, that would be a very big problem. So it's a, it's a great thing that they do uh, in that regard. Um, heart to beat, uh, lungs to breathe. Uh, that's all those things, the internal workings, get your stomach to work over breakfast or lunch or dinner uh, and so on. That is part of the autonomic nervous system telling the system to start up or not start up. Now, the autonomic nervous system has two speeds. It has two speeds, the first of which 
is what we refer to as a parasympathetic state. To me, para is passive, body at rest, okay? Sympathetic, para is passive, body at rest. If you're nice and calm right now, then your autonomic nervous system is in a parasympathetic state. That means that your heart is beating at a nominal rate, your eyes are taking in just a nominal amount of, of visual input, the ears are doing the same. Uh, there's probably not a lot of adrenaline in your system right now. Everything is calm, okay? If you've had something to eat recently, your body might be working over that meal. Passive, okay? Parasympathetic state. But if you turn around and you unexpectedly get into an argument with someone, uh, or you turn around and find yourself in a situation where you suddenly feel threatened. Um, you know, one example given was someone was in a fender bender as they were leaving campus because they honestly were looking at their phone, it wasn't me, and the person in front of them that they hit at about three miles an hour got out and started yelling at them. Well, you're no longer in a parasympathetic state. The autonomic nervous system knocks you into what's called a sympathetic state, okay? Uh, this is struggle. This is basically fight or flight. And, and when your autonomic nervous system takes you to this gear, this uh, sympathetic state, okay, it basically tells the body, we've got a problem out here. So things that will happen, heart rate, pick up the pace. The autonomic nervous system basically tells it that. Stomach, stop what you're doing. We'll get to you later. Your vision, your hearing, things like this actually get better. Adrenaline into the system right now, we need you. We need to be prepared to either fight or flee, and that is the sympathetic state. So the autonomic nervous system works in two speeds, either a calm passive speed and keeps the body at a nice normal rate or at a highly accelerated rate if something should be going on that needs to be addressed. Okay. So once again, this is sort of what I was just covering here. You see off to the right there, it says the peripheral nervous system. And the peripheral nervous system, as you see there, has the somatic uh, as part of the peripheral nervous system, voluntary movements of skeletal muscles, and then it has the section that runs the automatic, the self-regulated actions of organs and glands. And then basically that automatic has two speeds, all right? It has a sympathetic state and a parasympathetic state. So that explains one side of the chart. In the blue on this chart, you will see uh, what is called the central nervous system. And in the strictest sense, the central nervous system also has only two parts, the brain and the spinal cord. We'll talk about the brain in another video, but for now I wanna say just a little bit, just a little bit about the spinal cord, okay? This sort of says what I just made comment to, that the central nervous system, part of the nervous system consisting of the brain and the spinal cord. So let's move on from here. Here's that spinal cord. The spinal cord, uh, I've heard it referred to as the information superhighway of the body, okay? It is like a, you know, you hear of a two lane road and a four lane road and a six lane road. This is like a 128 lane road in one direction and 128 lanes coming back. Uh, it basically handles information going to and from the brain, okay? So information could be sent by the peripheral uh, system. It leads to the spinal cord. The spinal cord sends it onto the brain. The brain processes it and sends the response back down. Imagine sitting uh, in a room listening to someone talk and you feel something on your hand and you look down and there is a fly. So you just sort of, you know, move your hand just a little bit and the fly turns around and flies away. When that fly landed on your hand, the neurons sent an electrochemical message to the brain, something's down here. You look down and see it's just a fly, it's no big deal, so you turn around and send a message back down your arm that basically says, you know, flick your wrist and watch it fly away. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. One fascinating function of the spinal cord is this. 
it does work in conjunction with the brain. There is no doubt, all right, in a collaborative functioning. But studies have found, and I won't go into great detail, that the spinal cord can sometimes seemingly work independently of the brain. It can actually work independently of the brain when it comes to dealing with reflex reactions. No joke. Uh, when something is reflexive, uh, if you're stepping on something as you're walking along and it's very, very sharp and you're in bare feet, uh, the pain impulses will fly up your leg, they will get to your spinal cord, and the spinal cord will send those messages onto the brain. But what we found is that the spinal cord will actually send the response back down your leg, a response like, pick up your leg, silly, you're about to do some serious hurt before it gets to the brain, as if it's making a decision on its own. It's really not its own brain center, but it does seem to have the ability to handle reflex of learning. And that's one of the things that is really fascinating about this. Some people consider that independent action. Some people say it's not. We're not going to get into that. Okay. What I want you to know about the spinal cord is that it's the information superhighway uh, to and from the brain. It can handle responses uh, collaboratively with the brain, works with the brain, and it can also work independently of the brain. One last little detail worth noting. The spinal cord is not something that holds up your physical frame. Uh, you hear people say that person is spineless and supposedly infer that they, they you know, they turn into a, a blob of jelly, okay? That's not true. Your muscles hold up your frame, not your spinal cord. That's not its job. It's a, it's a information center. It's not a, a hard structure to hold up the whole chassis, as it were. So we could get into more discussion. We could talk about the route that information takes going up and coming back. And, you know, we're not going to get into all that, nor am I going to hold you to that. But this is a breakdown of some of the material that makes up the nervous system. A quick breakdown of the peripheral nervous system and its parts. And then talking about the central nervous system and the spinal cord. We'll get into the other aspect of the central nervous system. That's the brain in another video. All right. That's enough for now. Take care.